ג'יזל בן דור, שלום. שלום. And welcome to Culture Buzz. My pleasure, thank you. I should have said maestro, ג'יזל בן דור. I, I can accept that. <laughs> you are probably uh, the most famous Israeli female conductor. You have conducted numerous Israeli orchestras, not to mention numerous orchestras abroad. So, how did it all start? Uh, it started very early on. It started uh, at a very young age in Uruguay, where I was uh, born and raised. And uh, when I was 12, I didn't know that I wanted to be a conductor, or I didn't even know what a conductor was, but I started conducting. I started conducting in just the natural way, the way uh, children uh, play games or uh, build uh, with building blocks. So I got my friends together and started groups and choirs, and we started performing. in public. So uh, when I was 14, I was hired by the school. It was a, a Jewish school that I went every day in Montevideo. Um, very good school. It doesn't exist anymore. And they appointed me the music director of the school. At the age of 14? 14. Yes. Wow. It's a record. It, I don't know. I don't know. I think... In the Middle Ages, that's the way it was, that uh, musicians entered uh, the service of a patron at a very young age, and right. they started composing and conducting and uh, right. doing all the musical duties. And then you made Aliyah to Israel? Yes, I came on Aliyah when I was 17. I came by myself. My family followed later on, uh, bits and bits. including the grandparents, everybody. Wow, the entire came family came? Yes. But in the beginning, it was my project, and uh, something that I had wanted to do since I was 15. I had been uh, in Israel for a visit when I was 15 with my grandmother, and I wanted to stay. I didn't want to go back to Uruguay. This, I felt this was my place, and uh, I loved it. But my father insisted that I finish high school, And he was right now as a, as a mature person, I, I can see that I would have done exactly the same. So I waited impatiently for another two years and then I filled two suitcases and I boarded the plane. Lucky us. Hey, I, I, I think uh, it was maybe the best time of my life being here. Giselle, I've asked you before this conversation, how come that There are so few women in the world of conducting. There is a historic reason that is the easiest to explain because it's factual that uh, the world of music was dominated by men throughout the centuries. The composers, by a vast majority, I mean, I could name a few women like the famous Hildegard von Bingen, uh, there were exceptions, but those were very rare exceptions. Uh, and the conductors came out of that world, the world of the orchestra. Only men played in orchestras. Women did not play in orchestras until quite late in the 20th century. Hey, like in Shakespeare's uh, original theater. Men One played, could say exactly men, they, men they, played they, the role of the women. Well, that in, my, in the case of the Shakespearean theater, that I think was even a little bit perverse, you know. <laughs> But, so it was, it, would have, it was a solution of uh, an exchange that is not a natural exchange. In the case of the orchestra, it was just a solution of exclusion. You just didn't take women. Women could not... apply for jobs like that. These men live together, they tour together, and who would take care of the children anyway? Right. So this has always been the uh, formula. Women did not do uh, most things that men did. Uh, the change for women is relatively recent. Right. But, so that is the historic reason. It's simply the way things have been. 
then there are aspects that are more of an intangible um, nature. For example, the image of the conductor, the myth of the conductor, the conductor standing there above everybody, uh, producing with nothing this fantastic music, being the embodiment of the music, uh, God on earth, I mean God's gift to music, and all the legends that surrounded these conductors, uh, a woman could not possibly uh, enter those shoes in the minds of the people at the time. It was simply unacceptable. And then there is the physical aspect of conducting the orchestra. It is the sh showing that power, showing that ability to control and to control others in ways that are spiritual. And because we, we, we cannot measure the, uh, the music that comes out. You cannot write formulas that describe it. It's all in the uh, realm of perception, of uh, taste, of sensibility, of expression, of emotion. These are not quantifiable things. So when you see a woman having that kind of inspirational power, and remember that in religion there is still not a place for women. It's very slowly in some reform, for example, you, um, synagogues, you can have women uh, as rabbis. In conservative synagogues, there are women cantors right. that are good ones too. Unbelievably, yeah. o opera singer is quality. I, I go uh, to Park Synagogue, Park Avenue Synagogue in New York, and there is a chazanit there, Shiri Kidron, also Israeli, and she can wake up the heavens, you know, in the high holidays, and she can make me cry. Wow. This is it's just talent. What a compliment just coming from you. Few, oh, yes. Just, and, and I told her that. So I like to read uh, Torah also in the temple, and I am allowed. Okay. All this is new Giselle, for women. Giselle, let's talk inspirations. As you were growing up, discovering your uh, path, as a musician, mm -hmm. as a conductor. Who have been your inspirations, your role models when it comes to music? M music uh, as composers or conductors? Both. When I was a child, a very young child, I was inspired uh, enormously by music of the Middle Ages. It, it, and to this very day is perfect music to me. The medieval music? Music, the pre from the, even from the earliest Middle Ages, pre begin, beginning with the Gregorian chant, with a it, plain song, okay. Gregorian chant, okay. to the early motets and madrigals that were unaccompanied, a cappella music, human voice. I consider to this day, when they are well done, they are perfect compositions, uh -huh. just perfect expression of music. But of course, I started as an instrumentalist as well, so I what pianist, was piano, piano uh, as a classical musician. But I also taught myself to play guitar. In Latin America, is a very popular instrument. Of course. So it allowed me to have more friends. <laughs> and uh, the piano was a very highbrow uh, thing for my friends. And yeah. guitar, I could sit in a kumzitz and uh, you know, and I would be the certain center of attention. And I guess something I always craved <laughs> that served me. Uh, well, in, in the role of a conductor. I, I laugh I, at that I, because... I it, think we just got the explanation. Yes, <laughs> there, there, there you go. No, but I love that music. And later on, when I was 12, I fell in love with Rachmaninoff. Oh. And then there was Bach. So, I think the, the way my soul was being molded and my mind was changing, the composers came uh, naturally. And I know, of course, then uh, now I, I do a lot of music from Latin America. But in general, what influences me uh, already for many years is music that is inspired by music of the people. Which means? Music, uh, 
Czech composers, the nationalistic composers, composers that have used uh, folk music a lot in their music. But that can include Bartok as well. He doesn't quote any folk songs, but he constructs the, his music to sound like it. Uh, and the same with Latin American music. So I've come a very long way. And, 